At this time of year there's loads of stuff to hunt in all sorts of ways. Roy's weapon of choice today is a young and beautiful white goshawk. She's an extra special surprise from his old goshawk whom he has been flying for 17 seasons. He thought he'd breed from her one last time and he's a very happy boy. She's not a pure albatus. Uh, the albatus is a um, a genus or a subspecies of goshawk that does carry the white genetics. She's actually only a, a quarter. She's been doing a fair amount of work, been catching a few rabbits and a few pheasants, and as you can see, it's made her a little bit grubby. Also out with us today is Rocket Ron, the Harris Hawk, a cracking little bird whom we've seen out lamping before. He is now owned by Roy's friend Phil. Between the two of them, we're hoping for plenty of action. Ron is up first, and when it happens, it happens fast. It looks as if the rabbit might have given him the slip, but Ron is no slouch and has enough of a hold to stop it slipping back into the burrow. It's not unheard of for a bird to be dragged into a warren by a bolting bunny. So that was, uh, that was a good one. We had the first rabbit bolt, and uh, it was making a, a bee line towards the fence, which is unfortunately something that we're played with around this area that we, we just can't get away from, and that's fences. So. Uh, Luckily Ron's pretty good with those, he knows what they are. And uh, the rabbit took a, a sharp right turn when it went through the log and uh, he made short work of it and accounted for it. So first one in the bag. So hopefully we will continue along that, uh, that vein. Roy and Phil take it in turns to fly and the goss is up next. The rabbit makes it to cover just in time. There's rabbit activity all along the edge of the field, but the one with most appeal has more than just fences to deal with. I've not ferreted this piece of ground before, this is a, a fresh piece. We've got a lot of really nice earths out in the open here, but we've got a, a three strand power line and there's a junction box just at the top. And unfortunately if one of the birds lands on the junction box, then uh, that's pretty much it, game over. So uh, in order to avoid Kentucky Fried Goshawk or Kentucky Fried Harris Hawk, we'll uh, go back over that way and find somewhere else. That boy's got fried food on the brain. Next is a tight spot. It looks like the white goss is learning fast. Oh, oh blimey. Oh, nah. <laughs> a hawk off the fist in an environment like this. Well, quite tricky. We've got brambles that are about 10 yards away and a fence which is about 20 yards away so uh, it's a lot easier situation if you can get the Harris hawk up and fling it up into the tree, especially with a, an, a young hawk. So uh, as she becomes more experienced then she'll uh, be able to overhaul them a little bit faster but we're having a bit of sport. So. With limited space, Roy suggests to Phil he stick Ron in a tree. This technique works well for Harris Hawks, but not well for Gosses. And just to prove it, Ron gets his second of the day. It's frustrating for all, so Roy suggests we head off to some open ground. This is a bit more like it. As we head to our first likely site, we ask Roy about clothing. It's cold, but David hasn't been allowed to wear his warm camo jacket. Plus, Roy's mum says she's been told not to wear a floral print dress around the birds. So what's all that about? A lot of goshawks don't like camo. If they're used to it, it's not too bad, but some of the goshawks really don't like camouflage clothing. As I don't, I don't ever wear it when I'm out with the birds. So when you turned up in it yesterday, she certainly didn't like it. Same as red as well. Sometimes they really don't like red clothing. So there is uh, certain aspects of it. And plus the fact that I just wanted to make you suffer yesterday whilst you were filming and freeze your nipples off. So, well. Right, it all looks promising. We spot rabbits grazing as we approach and there is loads of space for the action to take place. And we're off. The rabbit has quite a march on her and the fence is looming, but she strikes at the last moment. Yeah, it's a fantastic flight, but there is more excitement to come. Come on, fuck me, that 
was close. Look at that fox coming into her. The distress call from the rabbit has attracted a fox and Roy suddenly sprints. This also deserves a slow-mo. But jesting aside, the fox could easily go large, taking the rabbit with the goshawk as extra fries. It was a close call, but no harm done and our goss has a bunny in the bag. As I was coming over, I could hear the rabbit squealing and we're next to something that looks very foxy, so I was a little bit worried, but and sure enough, there was a, a very large dog fox only about 20 yards away from the goshawk making its way in. So if we had been a little bit slower or if she'd, she'd caught it a little bit further away, then there's a very good chance that the fox would have taken both the goshawk and the rabbit. So, and that, you know, unfortunately that can happen. I've known of a few friends birds that have unfortunately been taken by foxes. And we've, we're now facing the problem as well that buzzards are coming in where buzzards are becoming a lot more numerous. Buzzards are coming in and attacking birds on the kills. So you've always got to bear in, and bear in mind that there's other predators out there, especially if you've got a rabbit kicking and squealing a little bit, that are always uh, opportunists and will make use of it. Yeah, it's a good girl. There's a bit more action, but nothing is moving far from base. The rabbits aren't as eager as they could be, so we venture out another day for some more sport. Again, we have open space, but we need to make sure the warrants we choose aren't too large for us to cover properly with one bird, and are showing signs of activity too. This is the first earth I wanted to do, but it's not looking overly active. So you can see there's an awful lot of leaf litter in the entrance to the earth, and the, the runs going into it are not overly well used. So. They're not, it's not looking good for this one, but this is, a, this is quite a big earth, this is about 15 holes here, so there could be a, a few entrance and exit holes further on, so we'll just have a look, but again, when you're coming into an earth, you want to be very quiet, or as quiet as you can, and just try and creep around it and not stomp all over the top of it, so we'll just see if it's worth having a go with the ferret, so I just want to see a little bit more activity. For our first stab, we stand away from Roy to intercept the rabbits as they leave home. It's a good 10 minutes before the first burst. Again, we are stopped in our tracks, but our second attempt is more successful. So that was a shame with the first flight. She just needed an extra couple of yards and she would have been on that one. So uh, she made up for it with the second. But, uh, now we've just got to find a few more, hopefully. Roy gives her the heart and lungs and trades up. Our third flight of the day is impressive, but without a prize at the end of it. Roy does have an excuse though. Right, my excuse for that one is she's wet, all right? <laughs> she flew the rabbit and caught it coming down to this earth and we've just ferreted this one. And we had a lovely bolt just coming out across. And I suppose we had about a 40 or 50, 50 yard flight on that one. And it got uh, into the brambles, but she was right on it. And uh, my excuses are now starting to, to reel out and I blame it that it's because she is wet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back up to the car, just put the fan heaters on for five minutes, dry her off a little bit and move on to the next earth. So next one she'll catch. Roy dries her off in the car. Not something you see every day, but important all the same. Usain Bolt doesn't run quite as fast wearing flip-flops. This style of hunting takes an awful lot of concentration and patience. You stare at the ground for what feels like hours, waiting and anticipating, only to see a ferret nonchalantly stroll out of a hole when all you want is the ground to eject a bunny and for it all to kick off. Anyway, we only have one more instance of that. It's close, but not close enough. We could have brought out a few of the more experienced older girls and we would have certainly put more in the bag but uh, they know the game, so at the moment it's just nice to concentrate on the young hawks and bring those on, and then we've, uh, we're making headway for the future.